Hello, my name is William Forsythe, a data science graduate student at Regis University. This is my Practicum 2 project, audio vis visual presentation of a time series classification exercise using XG Boost. I chose the wearable stress and effect detection data from UCI Machine Learning Repository to gain a deeper understanding of physiological emotion data. The primary focus will be on the chest sensor data. Model builds will include testing and comparing multiple models using a variety of features to produce multi-class classification reports and an analysis report. Stress-related or induced illnesses account for 75 to 90% of doctor office visits, and the annual cost to industry is about $300 billion. Effects from long-term stress can produce an increased risk of physiological and psychological disorders, including heart complications, diabetes, ulcers, skin problems, loss of sexual desire, changes in appetite, chronic pain, arthritis, depression, and an increased use of drugs, alcohol, not to mention asthma and anxiety. Project objectives. Modeling objectives included fine-tuning a base XGBoost model as a standard to use for all other tests and remaining subjects, and to test, assess, and determine best future combinations. An evaluation objective was to test how well XGBoost would classify or predict stress when compared to a baseline state, and to assess gender and environment factors between subjects during stress. The mission objective included gaining knowledge and practice using XG Boost for future applications and potentially for Kaggle competitions. XG Boost. XG Boost is an ensemble of gradient boosted decision trees that perform correlation filtering internally automatically reduces the feature set and manages outliers and missing values well. It is probability based and unaffected by scale factors, therefore requires no pre-processing such as normalization, standardization, or noise removal. An advantage of using SG Boost when compared to other algorithms that rely on CPU usage is that it can use a GPU for multi-threading parallel computing, thereby reducing model run times, which is a big advantage over other ensemble methods and neural network models when applied to very large data sets. This project involved using the WESAD, Wearable Stress and Effect Detection, multimodal data to produce multi-class classification reports, which included extensive exploratory data analysis and some data cleaning. The data source from, was from the UCI machine learning site shown down here below. Uh, link here is below on the left hand side. Uh, included questionnaires, included scaled emotional responses. The SSQ questionnaire involves scaled commitment states. The sensor data was pickle formatted at about 13 gigabytes in size. The data included 15 subjects, each in different files. The chest data included subjects three female and 12 male graduate students. Row counts were greater than three and a half million, but varied greatly between subject files. Data processes include load, unpickled data, and read. Uh, included separate chest features, from the risk features, change 
the files to a NumPy array and, a, and the array to a data frame. Uh, I included check type value counts and for missing values, although that wasn't actually necessary. Chest sensors included electrothermal activity, electromyogram, electrocardiogram, skin temperature, a three axis accelerometer, and respiration. The target variable is label. Uh, label is the classes. These classes included conditioning, baseline, stress, amusement, and meditation. One, two, three, and four. Uh, labels five, six, and seven were not defined. However, they corresponded to short duration time questionnaires. And the remaining series label was zero, also not defined. Risk sensor attributes also found in the chest device included the accelerometer, electrodermal activity, and skin temperature. These plots show the sensor series. It's uh, highlighted baseline, stress, meditation, and amusement. There is a steep rise in electrical thermal activity during the street stress phase. Looking at the series plots helped to grasp what was occurring and help with discovery. The model created ACC EDA temp features selected from the chest device resolved a problem of determining risk performance regarding stress. The risk device sensors had so much shorter frequencies and did not align at all with the target labels. This here is a, an exploration of features from the chest device, contrasting the stress phase with the baseline phase, and help decide to combine these three sensors, five features in total, for a model test. Uh, the model test evolved from close examination of the plot shown in this and the previous slide, and that would include the accelerometer, epidermal activity, and skin temperature, also known as ACC EDA GEMP. Here I decided to exclude five, six, and seven uh, because I didn't think they were adding any value whatsoever to the models. And they were also causing a lot of imbalance so this is a chart of the before and after, removing them or excluding them actually. Using all sensor features, when compared to splitting the sensor data was the best predictor of stress. F1 stress and F1 average for model ACC EDA tip was nearly equal to model all chest. Clearly using all chest features produced the best prediction result, and ACC EDA temp was a close second. Here we can see from the multi-class error plot, or learning curve on the right, stopped improving somewhere around 270 epochs. Afterwards, test and training ran parallel, indicating that overfitting was not present. Changes to default parameters include changing the objective to softmax for multi-class, tree method to a GPU to make use of the GPU, applying a gradient base of 0.1 for subsampling, and a gamma for minimum loss reduction from a default of 0 to 3 to make slightly more conservative. Evaluation metric used to create the plot was multi-class error. The learning curve plot showed excellent performance with no overfitting detected, resulting in F1 accuracy 
shown in the left. Score of 0.9872 or 98.72%. Although there was some imbalanced support, it did not appear to need a different sampling method or reweighting. This is a continuation of the previous slide. Uh, misclassification count 10,022, which uh, gave a percent of 0.3% misclassified. You see from the chart and the plot or the uh, table and the plot on the right, all the uh, scores, F1 stress and F1 accuracy comparison. You see that all chest and the uh, acceler accelerometer, EDA temp were fairly close in accuracy. Two models chosen for comparisons and analyses were the all chest model, which included all the chest features, and the model ACC EDA temp, which included features from the chest that aligned with accelerometer, epidermal activity, and skin temperature, wrist sensors. Here we can see the plot and the mean for both all chest and the ACC EDA temp models uh, across six subjects. It would be S4, 8, 11, 13, 16, and 17. The mean for both were pretty close together, 99.26% and 98.64% for the ACC EDA temp. Of the 15 subjects, only three were female, so I chose a total of six subjects to get an even gender distribution. Even though the number of subjects was too low to make any reliable analysis, predictive baseline for female male were essentially equivalent. There is a slight difference between male and female, but not that much. This is a comparison of stress reflecting environmental condition to get the number the subject is too low to make a reliable appraisal. However, the analysis is presented here as an example of what else might be accomplished using this type of data. Originally, the goal included valuation of the model output and did not include using data from the chest sensors as surrogate risk data. Some extra exploration, such as the series plots and revisiting the demographics and notes. Decisions made were to add the model ACC EDA temp and to compare genders and to contrast comfort states. Sampling the data provided included 15 demographically limited subjects in a short duration controlled environment. Future more in depth experiments would likely need a greater number of participants reflecting a broader demographic range applied to a real-world scenario over a longer, much longer, period. It is unlikely that a real-world scenario would include a chest-worn device, which was in part the reasoning to include the accelerometer, electrodermal activity, and temperature attribute combination. Additional risk-worn monitors could include heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, and an electrocardiogram. The models chosen perform well, effectively, effectively classifying stress. A bit more fine tuning may have produced slightly better scores. However, a primary emphasis was to test precision and compare stress versus baseline and to explore other factors affecting a stress state. 